Hey everyone, welcome to Pro Encore, and today I'm going to give you guys some tips on photography and makeup, so keep watching. Hey everyone, it's Corin, and you're watching Encore Makeup. Blend, blend, blend. Hi Corin, stop using my lipstick. Hey everyone, welcome back. So Elisa Persbuzz in here and we are going to uh, have a photo shoot for Elisa. She's getting her headshots done and I thought this is going to be the perfect time to give you guys some tips on photography makeup. Now yesterday I did a demo here at IMATS Toronto and I used Elisa as a model and I did a look on her but in photography it looks different. That What the camera sees is different from what your naked eye sees. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. So let's begin. Okay, so as always, we're going to start with the eye makeup, and I'm going to use my, uh, or actually, this is Elisa's shadow primer from Urban Decay. I'm just going to apply that right on the main lip, and just soften and blend it, covering the whole lid area. Again, from the base of the lashes, working it upwards towards the brow bone. Okay, and then the palette I'm going to be working with today is from Ben Eye, and this is uh, the Essential Eyeshadow Palette. And I'm going to use the color shell and a flat shader brush. I'm going to apply this to the main lid as the base color, working upwards towards the brow bone. And the reason why I'm using the Essential Eyeshadow Palette is because they are all mattes and one key thing with photography is that using matte colors is a little bit more ideal because any shimmer, any reflex, or any glitter, the uh, digital format of camera is going to pick it up and it's going to look too shimmery, too glittery, it looks like a mirror ball. So try to stick to using matte colors as much as possible. Okay, the next color I'm going to apply is Cork, which is a little bit of a warm brown color. And I'm just going to use my blender shader brush and I'm going to apply this right around the crease line. And then using my blender brush, I'm just going to soften that. All right, next I'm going to use the dark brown, which is a black brown, and my bullet brush. I'm going to add this to the end to the lower crease. And then once again with the blender brush, we're going to soften that. So when we're doing this, and it's for my photo shoot, what makeup, I guess for eyes right now, is what makeup would you use for a photo shoot versus like every day? Like what's the difference? Uh, for photo shoot it tends to uh, for photo shoot it tends to be uh, a little bit more of a dramatic look because uh, uh, the um, camera and the flashes is going to wash out some of the colors so for everyday look you tend to kind of be a little bit of um, a light application with the color and when the flashes hit that it's going to wash it out and it looks like you're not wearing anything. So if you want to see a little color on camera, you're going to need to uh, apply a little bit more of color. Like how much more? You'd say 30%, 20%, 50%? I would say probably up it up by 30% first. Look behind the camera, very important, with a flash, and see you know, how much more you need to adjust. And if you think that it's still washed out a little bit, then add and build as you go. But what's important is like, you always have to go behind the camera and see what the camera lens is seeing and then adjust from that and always start you know light and then build so that's a good point for the holiday pictures and holiday parties then is to remember to go up 30 percent absolutely for the event so that your photos will look great yes what brands what brands do you recommend for photo ready camera ready products is definitely ideal for um, for photography makeup, make sure that you know the, the, there's not a lot of metals in the content or in the ingredient of the product. 
and because the metal is going to reflect back much like mirrors on the camera lens so um, you want a lot of mats of course like I said earlier and uh, there are certain like makeup brands that really specialize on camera photo uh, photography makeup like uh, Camera Ready Cosmetics, um, RCMA, uh, Yabby, of course, because uh, the owner is also a photographer. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you, you say know, Ben Nye? Ben Nye, definitely. Uh, any of the uh, theatrical makeup companies, Ben Nye, Krylon, Maron, um, you know, they will definitely be excellent for stage film photography. So how do you handle when you're taking a picture, or when the photographer's taking a picture, mm -hmm. and they're at a certain angle, and one eye is lighter than the other? Do you compensate with that eye and darken just that one up? Well, that's when you uh, talk to the uh, photographer and see what he sees. He's also involved in this project, of course. And uh, just kind of like ask what kind of uh, angle would it be? Would the, this side of the face be uh, on a shaded part? You know, and this side would be on the lidded part, and therefore you just kind of like base on what the uh, the frame's going to look like. Then you don't need to adjust. Now, if this is on the shaded part and this is darker than this part, then you would have to compensate for that. You will have to just darken this side, and you don't need to touch this side because this side is going to be on the shaded part. You just need to adjust the one. And what if it's too dark in the photo? Like, how do you help lift color? when you're on, you know, running around trying to do makeup really quickly? Oh, easily. Um, what you want to do is you just want to take um, a sponge and just dampen it a little bit with a refresher spray. Mm -hmm. And you just pick up a little bit of color by just wiggling the sponge over it. Okay, and then when it picks up a little bit of color, just use your blender brush again, much like this one, and just go over it once again and lighten it a little bit. So you don't need to uh, remove all the makeup. And that would be the fastest way to do it as well. So you say, you know, don't use shimmers and sparkles because the camera picks it up mm -hmm. and it doesn't look as nice, but we see a lot of photos where the model, you know, or even in, on camera, they have like the dewy skin, there's mm -hmm. a little bit of frost. Are they using something different? Yeah, either um, the photographers would edit the uh, shots to add those uh, effects later on, mm -hmm. you know, by uh, digitally with, uh, you know, using like Photoshop or something like that, or... You know, it's it's uh, it's also a combination of using other different products just for the uh, for the just for the purpose of that photography session. And it could be as simple as uh, just using clear gloss, lip gloss, adding it to those areas. You know, I know it's something that you're not going to want to wear the whole day on your day to day activities, but for the purpose of just photography and that session, you can pretty much use anything that will give you that glossy or that dewy effect. So what about lips? Like, do you just use an amplified cream, or do you use shimmer on the lips sometimes? Uh, very, very moderately. You can use a little bit of shimmer on the lips. I try to focus it mainly where the uh, photography lighting is going to hit you naturally, much like mim mimicking like sun. You know, where the light source is, and then I would just definitely just add a little bit of shimmer, probably maybe like the uh, middle of the pout on the upper and lower, and uh, just enough for it to give a little bit more depth and dimension, mimicking the natural light source. But as far as the whole lips, I would refrain from using, <laughs> you know, glittered lipstick or anything like that, especially for headshots, unless you're doing like, you know, like a, a high mod, editorial. yeah, editorial beauty that really focuses on glittered lips. What about brows? Brows, definitely very, very important when you are doing photography makeup because usually if you have sparse brows, mm -hmm. uh, again, the flashes can wash out the hair strands. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important that you really work now, on brows. Now, do you darken those by 30% as well? Uh, I would go, I would start 20% and then go behind the camera and see what it picks up and then build from that. Would you recommend a pencil or would you recommend powder? I, I recommend powder because it's matte and pencil sometime can give you, sometimes can give you that satin finish and a uh, camera, especially in HD format, is going to pick that up, that shine. So is there, like when we see, you know, HD shadow versus regular shadows, would you recommend an HD shadow or really it just needs to be 
a pigmented matte color? Uh, just pigmented matte color will work, definitely. It doesn't have to be like an HD specific product. And much like I said in my class yesterday, make sure to not waste your time making the eyes look identical. And I always say, make them look like sisters, but not identical twins. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for photography, you know, sometimes there are celebrities who have a little bit more rounded eyebrows and versus like an arched eyebrow. Mm -hmm. But for a look, you know, like I need her to have sharp arched vixen mm -hmm. eyebrows. What do you do? That's really simple to achieve. You can create a faux arch on your brow if you don't have a natural arch. And what you want to do is use the handle of a brush and you want to wedge that right side of the nostrils much like this. Angle it. Have your model look straight ahead. All right. And then have that kind of like visually pass the iris of the eye, which is the colored part. And where that reaches the brow is where the arch should naturally arch, or the brows should naturally arch. And then therefore you can mark that and then create a little bit of a peak and then fill in the rest. And then you can build from that. Depends on how high the arch you want. Okay, next, I'm going to be using the uh, Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On in Zero, which is a black. I'm just going to initially do the uh, top liner, and then I'm going to smudge and smoke this out. Does it matter what kind of eyeliner you use for photography? non-glittery, non-shimmery, <laughs> matte. You can do a little bit of a satin to it, which most um, pencil liners are because of the wax base, which just kind of gives you that uh, satin finish to it. But that's okay because you can matte it out with a powder when you set it. So would you say bridal makeup and photography makeup, camera ready would be the same? Absolutely. Brides are like the most photographed person on the day of their wedding. So definitely apply everything that you know about camera and photography makeup to every bride. Another tip for those of you guys who doesn't have thick lashes, wearing false eyelashes is definitely going to add density to your lashes and therefore it's going to read better on pictures, especially in HD cameras. And then as far as uh, the bottom lashes, all you need to do is really line the lower lash line and smoke it out and uh, just determine the uh, width of the liner but most importantly highlighting the inner corner is going to make your eye pop and this is of course going to attract light especially the flash and it's just going to open your eye a little bit more okay now we're ready to apply foundation and for this demo I'm using Eve Pearl's duo foundation in cream formulation because these are designed for HD and the film that's or the camera that's going to be used today is an HD and make sure that the foundation you have chosen does not reflect with the uh, camera flashes and always make sure to take a photo of your makeup first as you're applying it so that way you can see what the camera sees so I'm just going to apply this right in the t-zone and right on the cheekbone. And then using the darker of the two color, just going to apply this underneath. And then I'm going to shear that out with this with a wet sponge. Okay, now at this point I'm going to take a picture with my digital camera with my flash on and see what the what the lens is going to see. Okay, so far so good. Okay, and then concealing under under the eye, I always base that on what the camera see. So always take a picture of the eye area as far as darkening and lines in the under eye and then base your adjustment from the picture taken with a digital camera. Make sure to blend the uh, concealer and the uh, foundation using a sponge very, very light-handedly so that way you don't get, you know, uh, sponge marks that the pickup is going to 
pick up or the camera lens is going to pick up. All right, and then we're ready to set that with our HD uh, powder. I'm just going to use a sponge and then make sure that you're pressing it right into the foundation and you are not rubbing it because it's going to pick up the foundation that you already put in there and you don't want that to happen. So make sure that you're pressing and rolling. Okay, next we're going to use a little bit of bronzer, matte bronzer, and this is from Face Atelier. And I'm just going to use my fan brush on this one. This is the Ultra Bronzer in Brush Sable. And we're just going to do a little bit of contouring right underneath the cheekbones. Smile. Just going to hit it right underneath the cheekbone, working it up to the hairline. Okay, initially apply the color first. We're going to blend and smooth that out later on. Then the photographer told me that the flash is coming from overhead, so it's very important that you warm up the forehead area using a matte bronzer. Just apply that close to the hairline, and also um, contouring the nose is going to help as well because of the flash lighting coming overhead. Now to add just a little bit of color to Elisa's skin, I'm just going to add a little bit of a uh, coral colored blush. Okay, and then we're going to do a little bit light on the lips because we're doing dramatic, sexy, flirty eye. So for this, I'm just going to use a long wear lipstick. Starting from the middle of the pout and then brushing it outward in one sweeping motion. Don't do back and forth, just do one direction to the corner of the lips. Okay, and then going back to the middle of the pout going the other direction. Now here are a few shots taken by photographer Charles Williams and I cannot wait to see the rest of the proofs. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.